Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and here's a headline from the Daily Hoddle. Prominent analyst details huge upside target for XRP, says crypto asset may be bottoming out against Bitcoin. And so this particular analyst does believe that we will be seeing all-time highs, and frankly, it's his plan uh, to sell all of his XRP. I mean, understand what that means, though. That means that the pricing will be so high that he will feel enticed to sell all of his XRP. He is publicly stating this, along with all the rest of his crypto as well. Uh, but then in this article also, you have another very popular chart analyst who says XRP is going to hit, it potentially, its all-time low against Bitcoin. And then I just sat there, and I, as I was reading through this, and I was just like... <sighs> audible side with a face palm you know um <laughs> because it's it's somebody who is not a fan of ripple not a fan of xrp and this individual is consistently wrong when speaking about uh, ripple and xrp so it is what it is but uh, that's why i'm glad i've got this platform so that i can talk about this stuff that's just getting piped into the crypto community i see this stuff on twitter and i'm thankful i have this platform so i can at least say my piece on this and you guys can think whatever you think but i'm going to share with you a couple things on this topic and then beyond that i got a few other opinions from various chart analysts uh, but before I go any further, I do want to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just a simple little moon nambo, hanging out all up on the internets doing moon nambo things. But this is just a hobby, I just want to be clear. Now, as I record this video, XRP is at $0.64, cents, Bitcoin's at $34,395, market cap for the asset class $1.4 and Bitcoin dominance at 46%. But I'm telling you, you just wait, that thing is going to tank before this market cycle is over because altcoins will outperform Bitcoin. I firmly believe that. That is my expectation here. Now, uh, into this piece. So who are the chart analysts in question? Well, the first one is Credible Crypto. And um, and then the second one is Peter Brandt. And so P P Peter Brandt, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of the background right now. I think that Peter Brandt is, is legitimately actually a very talented uh, chart analyst. He's got a storied career for, uh, it goes on for several decades or so. He's had a, a best-selling book on Amazon. And so he's got over half a million followers on Twitter, I believe. And, uh, and, and I'd say in a general sense, rightfully so. You know, when, when, you, when you do see uh, the people that have half a million followers, that doesn't happen on accident, right? And so respect where it's due. But this is somebody who says uh, Ripple is a scam. The company and the coin, and he conflates the two. He does that actively. And at this point, it's on purpose just to, like, grind the gears of people in the XRP community. Of course, he knows the difference between Ripple and XRP. One's a company, one's a decentralized cryptocurrency, but he says both are scams. And so the way that I look at it with people like this, if they're legitimately good at, uh, at what they're doing, at trading in general, then I'll just pay attention to them for uh for for like anything else because i'll tell you what he's he's had some amazing calls about bitcoin he legitimately has so i won't take away from that uh he called the top of the last market cycle with bitcoin at 20 grand he also called the bottom when bitcoin got down to whatever it was about a year later i think it was like 3200 or so uh so he, he he was hitting the nail on the head on those and those are just a couple of examples off the top of my head where he's, he's done fantastic but then when he talks about xrp uh, it, it just a supremely bad job, and it can't it can't be coincidence. It's it's that uh, you know bias is seeping into what uh, what 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 his analysis is is uh, is showing here on Twitter. So anyway, um, let's jump into this. So a high profile analyst is doubling down on his massive XRP bet for this bull cycle, even if the seventh largest crypto asset is showing signs of uncertainty. Uh, analyst Credible Crypto tells his 220,700 followers on Twitter that he believes XRP could be bottoming out against Bitcoin, so that would be the XRP slash BTC pair, as it finds support around 0 .000015, and here's a quote. Some calling for new lows on XRP slash BTC. While it's technically possible, I think a reversal off this region makes more sense considering XRP slash USD is on major historical support. 
And so, uh, indeed, Credible Crypto thinks that uh, despite what we've seen for the last month and a half or so, uh, that's not some sort of indication that the bull runs over. It doesn't mean that XRP is not going to hit its all-time high. In fact, he believes that we're going to see face-melting price action for XRP before this thing's all said and done. So check this out. The closely followed crypto strategist also confirms that he's holding strong on his massive bet that XRP will hit 20 to $30 before the end of this current bull cycle. And, and that's a level that many analysts that I follow think makes a whole bunch of sense. But even, even if someone like the blockchain backer is correct, I'll be thrilled. Because blockchain backer, for those of you familiar with him, you, you may have heard him say this a number of times, but he's expecting XRP to peak anywhere from 10 to $13 this market cycle. Hey, totally okay with that. Will not mind seeing that in the least. That'll be a big success as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but it could go much higher. It's, it's certainly possible here. But then you've got Peter Brandt. Oh, Peter Brandt. And you, you need to know this too. And I cited this because he's talking about the XRP slash BTC pair. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know that you know that Peter Brandt you must be. You know, this is one of the most basic things. Look, I'm not, a, I'm not a chart analyst. I don't pretend to be. But um, I know that uh, when, when, uh, when it, it costs a whole lot more XRP to purchase a Bitcoin, that means there's a huge disparity. And, uh, and, and when something's looking like it's at an all-time low, uh, people aren't paying attention, people are not bullish on it, given that fundamentals don't sufficiently matter in this marketplace, that could be an indication that something's undervalued, right? So, for instance, you can think about, even in terms of uh, United States dollars or pick your fiat currency, when, when the price of, uh, of Bitcoin was at $65,000, uh, perhaps that was a sign with all the laser eyes and diamond hands and all the euphoria that was occurring then that maybe this thing could be a little overbought. Maybe the market needs to cool down a little bit. And I was warning about that, just not because I'm some sort of chart was I absolutely am not. I just understand the human psychology of all this and how humans behave. And when something runs up that quickly and is that high, and then you get all this hysteria around it, uh, that, that, that can be cause for concern. There may be a big pullback, and I was warning about that. I said at some point, I suspect it's going to happen. I don't know when or how bad it's going to be. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 50%, and it ended up being a little bit more than that, actually. So there you go. Now, on the flip side, when prices are this low, perhaps perhaps the market uh, overcompensated, is oversold, that that can represent an opportunity for people that want to purchase, right? These are very basic things to, to understand, right? Just like when Bitcoin was at 20 grand, okay, maybe a little bit too high too quick, but on the flip side, when it was down to $3,200 after that, okay, maybe it's a little bit oversold. He understands these things, right? And so he's intimidating people effectively. He's, he's, he's not talking about good price action for XRP when it occurs. He's not really excited to talk about that. But Peter Brandt, um, when he's talking about this huge disparity, and he's acknowledged it when it has actually occurred in the past, he's just warning people, but what actually happened the last two times he did this? Well, if you think the last time he did it, uh, or, well, the last time he did it, I guess it would have been... It could have technically been in March, or it was the beginning part of April. I have to go double check, but he he warned right before this year when XRP ran up to to two dollars. He was warning, "Hey guys, XRP, look at the XRP BTC pair. My gosh, watch this thing." That's that's what he was conveying. Uh, and for anybody that got scared about purchasing XRP because of that tweet, uh, they missed the biggest XRP bull run in years, frankly. And it still hasn't hit its all-time high, so I still think the best is, is yet to come. But I'm just saying, at that moment, uh, the, the, the opportunity would have been missed. It also would have been missed when he said the same thing about the XRP BTC pair in either late October or early November uh, before XRP ran up from 20-something cents up to almost 80 cents, which at that point was also uh, the most awesome XRP price action we'd seen in years because we had just spent a few years in a bear market, right? And so uh, he's he's warning about So I just I can't trust anything he he says about XRP and I don't but since he's getting covered here I'm thankful I have this platform so I can share with you just a little historical perspective about how he feels about Ripple and XRP how he treats it when he shares technical analysis on it and how uh, the implications you're supposed to get this is just his his uh, his accuracy when it comes to talking about XRP and what to expect way off compared to when he talks about what to expect for Bitcoin. Now, why is that? Why is it so off? Might it be because he's got notable bias? <laughs> I would think that the answer indeed is yes. So I don't care what he has to say on that. I don't listen to him on that, but I will acknowledge the rest. So like when, when he says other stuff about the market, especially with Bitcoin, uh, yeah, I'm going to listen because I don't think that um, a, like a strange level of bias is seeping into that particular analysis. Um, so that's why I said credit words do, but when it comes to Ripple and XRP comments, no, 
not even close. Not willing to. In fact, I'm I'm sitting here warning you that he's a biased individual that thinks that XRP legitimate. Like he. That's a weird way to word. I was going to say because he actually believes that XRP is a scam. Unbelievable stuff, as far as I'm concerned. And then Credible Crypto also tweeted out the following, and this is just from a, a little bit earlier today. If we can break, and he's talking about Bitcoin here, if we can break thirty-five to $38,000, I'm looking for a move to $45,000 to $55,000. If we can get to $55,000, i will look to hedge short. I know if we manage to get there, many will be euphoric, calling for new all-time high, when in reality, that region is the most likely place to see a midterm rejection have a plan. And I'm expecting to see that too, because whatever the general retail sentiment is, I'm just thinking, okay, well, whatever you're thinking, that means it's wrong, because that's that's general sense. That's what history shows us. Uh, retail speculators are really bad at this. The the, the, the typical, and I I know that I'm one and you are one, but I'm just saying that like the the typical retail speculator very bad. Uh, the reason that I'm not very 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 bad at this is because I don't do anything. I'm not a wizard, you know? I'm not out there time in the market, oh, I'm buying what I need to, I'm selling what I need to. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing a damn thing because that's the only thing I can control is doing precisely nothing. That's the reason I'm not a typical retail speculator. Most retail speculators don't do what I'm doing, which is nothing. They feel like they must do something because it feels bad when what they're investing is worth less. And I get it. Or, or, or then there's the FOMO, of course. Oh my gosh, look at these other people on Twitter talking about how they're making all this money on this crypto that I hadn't heard until five minutes ago. Oh my gosh, I got to throw all my money at it too. Like, this is what people do. I just choose not to. So you do what you want to do. I'm not telling you to buy or hold, sell or hold anything. Uh, but in a general sense, that's the way I'm looking at this stuff here. <clears throat> uh, now, here's a tweet from chart analyst Michael Vandepop. The critical breaker remains to be $35,000. <clears> Breaking through that level. And range, uh, range high seems very likely for Bitcoin. I'm also expecting sentiment to flip from ultra bearish to ultra bullish once we get to the upper regions, like it always will. And so there you go. It's all of the chart analysts that I follow understand this, and you should too. It's worth knowing this. Uh, arm yourself with knowledge here. This is what happens. The typical retail speculator, ultra bearish right now, you can see it in the Bitcoin fear and greed index. But what will happen as we get to these upper levels? people start to inch closer and closer and closer into greed and then ultimately extreme greed. So just because we're in extreme fear right now, if you look at the Bitcoin fear and greed index, it doesn't mean we're never going to hit extreme greed again. Oh, we're going to hit extreme greed. I just don't pretend to know when. I'm just a patient holder of crypto. And I just, I understand that when you hit extreme greed, uh, that that doesn't mean that you'll never have extreme fear again. When you hit extreme fear again, it doesn't mean you're never going to have extreme greed again. It just flip flops back and forth endlessly. That's just that's what it's been doing for over a decade now in the crypto markets. Not exactly surprising, but it is fun to see the retail speculators, which is why this this tweet is fun. And this comes from uh, chart analyst Kaleo. Shared the following with his 327,000 followers, and I saw it actually from a handful of different people, but it's a fun clip just circulating on Twitter today. It's, it's, it's a video, it goes on for a minute and 37 seconds, and it's about people protesting birds because birds are not real. Yes, flying little birds out there, avian creatures, not real. And, and so Kaleo, he tweeted out this video and he wrote, I'll let it play silently as I as I talk here. Um, so all these people are like, they're having such a good time out there, though. And so Kaleo, he writes, uh, what bears here when I tweet bullish Bitcoin posts at the bottom? And this is a bunch of people protesting birds because they're not real. Like, look at this one girl holding this sign. Pigeons are liars. Now, <laughs> now that she looks so happy, though. This is, <laughs> I, I, I get a kick out of this. Still, so they have to be joking. Obviously, I understand that, but it's still hilarious to me. What bears here when I tweet bullish Bitcoin posts at the bottom? Birds aren't real. It's just the most crazy nonsense stuff. And this is their leader right here on the screen. Oh, look at this. Actually, if you can look at your screen, it's worth taking a look at this. This is an imprint on the side of this guy's vehicle. And it shows a bird here. And so what they're stating is that birds are actually, uh, they're not live creatures. All the birds on the planet were slaughtered and replaced with little robot birds. And so you'll notice, so he says this. <laughs> That birds, you'll notice they hang out on like uh, power lines, and um, and they actually use their feet touching the power lines to to charge their robot bodies, and they've got here on the screen they got a speaker, a CPU, battery. Their, their eyeballs are actually cameras. There's a microphone, and they're monitoring you, wireless antenna, 
And so there you go. Birds are not real and people are out there protesting it. And it's it's just the funniest thing. And so I actually Googled it and they actually have their own damn website there. Like, I, I was having a good time. Like this guy here, he was on some, some local news channel. I think this might have been in Memphis. I can't remember what he said. And so this guy that had mannerisms that ended up reminding me somewhat of Napoleon Dynamite. He says, look, I'm just uh, your typical American. I, I wake up in the morning, I wash my car, and I don't believe that avian creatures are real. I was like, okay. And there we are. <laughs> Got a kick out of this, man. Uh, check it out if you if you want a good laugh. I mean, it's fun. Birdsaren'treal.com. So it's, it's it's parody, but they play it off. Like, but that's what makes it more funny, actually. They play it off like it's an actual thing they believe. Um, here's a tweet from the blockchain backer. Prices push up as weekly candles close with last hour price action for Bitcoin and XRP price chart. And he was he was basically noting how um, it was it's like towards the end of the the, 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 the the week is when you actually amazingly saw some of the most exciting price action. And so you didn't close lower than what uh, what you would have hoped for necessarily for Bitcoin and for XRP. And also noted that uh, as far as the Bitcoin greed, uh, fear and greed index, which actually decided, he noted that in terms of being an extreme fear, um, I believe what he said was last mark or last uh, last time this happened when the whole pandemic scare happened last year, uh, we were in that extreme fear mode for I believe he said 45 days, and right now we're at 44 days of this, and so that's about the longest it's ever happened, if not the longest that we've ever been in this type of, of level of fear. So uh, it can only carry on for so long. It's not like this market's just going to go to zero. This is just how human speculators believe. Uh, and feel in, in the space, and so they, they buy and sell accordingly. And so for me, I was just like, okay, well, just sit here by doing nothing. That's me weathering the storm, doing nothing. Uh, so I think we're going to be popping out of it at some point. So to all the bears that were insistent that uh, this is all going to zero and we're in a bear market, see you in a few years again, I say, no, that doesn't make a damn bit of sense. And I don't know that for sure. But based on uh, what I've seen and all the stuff I've been talking about for the last few weeks in particular, and I don't want to rehash all of it in this video, but just based on that, I don't believe that's the most probable thing. Yes, I acknowledge we can see lower. And even on the XRP BTC pair, yeah, even if we do, like even if Peter Branch is right and we see an all-time low, well, my gosh, does that mean that it's a bad time to buy or a good time to buy? Well, again, I'm not telling you what to do specifically, but... Uh, I'm just saying the last couple times that he tweeted this out, it's it's almost like this is a sign when he, when Peter Brandt tweets about about XRP, it's like that's a sign to buy, right? <laughs> just like when people joke about Peter Schiff, anytime he tweets something out bad about Bitcoin, oh, that means it must be a good time to buy. It's kind of like that. Um, so take that for what it's worth, but it, it, the last couple times that I've seen him tweet this crap out, it's the same message again. Uh, they've been great times to buy. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that. But uh, I'm feeling good about this. I'm just excited. And I mean, even when, when times are, you know, a little bit more scary for the masses out there, like I just don't feel that emotion. I'm having a good time here. A red day. But uh, you let me know what you think in the comment section below. How do you feel? In fact, you know what I really want to know is, do you believe that birds are real? Or are they just government robots sent to spy on you? That's what I want to know. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.